and welcome to News Click. It's almost four months since violence broke out in Manipur on the 3rd of May. Ever since then, there have been sporadic incidents of violence and killings in the state. In the midst of the violence and the creation of buffer zones between the two communities who have been fighting in Manipur, there was also a one-day assembly session held in the state just a couple of days ago. The assembly session actually led to more protests, actually gatherings in the streets of Manipur, where people expressed their anger towards the government. Today, we are joined by Aisha Sabir, who is an independent journalist and has been writing for NewsClick. She's been reporting from Manipur ever since the conflict began. And we also have with us Siddhant Ane, who's also gone and reported from Manipur on the early, earlier days of the violence. Let's ask them what they think about the current situation and if anything has changed at all since the early weeks of the violence. Aisha, let's begin with you. You were actually there in Manipur on the day of this one day uh, uh, session of the assembly. What was the scenario like? Uh, um, uh, the news reports say that people were gathering. Did you see any of that? Uh, I saw unorganized gathering. I wouldn't call it um, a rally of any sort, um, but people were quite unhappy you know, with the way the session had proceeded. And uh, the fact that it did not conclude into something, to begin with, not many were hopeful, but they still wanted some outcome of it, you know. And that did not happen. It was uh, something around 11 minutes that uh, the session was for, with a break of 30 minutes, and uh, a ruckus, chaos, ruckus, and uh, not much happened, but people were still unhappy and they still are. To begin with. In fact, you know, you've written in news reports uh, for uh, NewsClick as well that there are actually crowds of people who are roaming around in Imphal and there's sounds of gunfire which you hear. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is that this whole idea of separating the cookies and the metes from each other has been sort of the linchpin of the discussions among the communities and all the discussion even in the political circles has been around whether that's possible or not possible. So, when there is a one-day session and the Metes make up the uh, population of uh, Imphal Valley right now, so would, would it be correct to assume that, uh, to understand that it is the Metes who are extremely upset with the government which is bringing them out on the streets? Uh, the Metes are, in this session definitely the public was in Imphal very uh, outraged. Uh, cookies were never hopeful to begin with. Uh, because they knew their MLAs had boycotted it. They were, it wasn't even safe to travel to Imphal to attend the session. And uh, knowing that it is a Mete dominated session, they did not want to participate. A dialogue that the central government has been asking, you know, the state to have with the two communities. That is only possible when the mediator is someone neutral, that both communities have faith in. But if you right. ask one community to initiate a conversation with the other community, which has, uh, in a way, already uh, separated, you know, there is a divide between the hills and the valley now, a permanent sort of divide. So a dialogue is just next to impossible. So right. a session that is dominated by Methis, not, uh, it will be a very one-sided session. So anything that could have, even if the session had lasted for long and had it continued for days, it would still be one-sided. The other side has not been heard. You know, Siddhant... I just wanted to jump in to yes. say, that despite that, uh, what, what Aisha is saying is absolutely spot on. Um, and But despite the fact that those attending this assembly session, except the six uh, opposition MLAs, six to 44, I think would be the number, so it's essentially talking to your own people, right? Mm -hmm. These are either <coughs> uh, uh, sort of connected by community, which is that they are Mete, the opposition uh, MLAs that is, or the 10 Nagas who right. are part of the wider uh, government structure. So if you are unable to even have a conversation regarding the situation on the ground today with people who are essentially already mostly on your side, Mm -hmm. uh, then what are what sort of indication are you giving to anyone outside of these communities that you are in a position to engage with the wider population of Manipur? Right, and does it also show that the that the Mete population living in Imphal 
is not a monolith like many of the news reports say, like the government would like to claim, make many claims on behalf of the Metes. But there is widespread dissatisfaction or there is a strong amount of opposition to the government, what it has done so far in the last four months. Uh, yeah. Would that be correct as well? Absolutely, yeah. It's not uh, at all uh, a sort of single identity with, with you know, a single sort of uh, socio-economic uh, background, a single cultural identity in, 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 in some ways in the sense that they follow different religions. For example, we've been talking about what's happening with Pangals. Uh, Pangals are Metei Pangals. Right. They are part of the Metei community. Uh, similarly, there's a small section of Metei Christians, uh, which we, which uh, so far, I think mostly for fear of the kind of reprisal they might face, uh, have completely sort of blended into the background. And their concerns are uh, seem furthest away from uh, what anyone is willing to address or look at at this point. Um, we did an interview with uh, Megan, who uh, is the former head of the UNLF, one of uh, the banned militant groups, uh, Mete, the valley-based militant groups. Um, and he was saying that the idea of the Mete is an inclusive idea. Right. Right. So it doesn't, it's, it's not a, a simple binary in the way that a Hindu-Muslim uh, sort of equation is in the rest of India. So in that sense, uh, conversations around what is the Mete community, etc., etc., have not been had in that detail. And 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 for a wider audience in India, it it some sometimes is boiled down to that this entire section just because uh, they belong to the valley. In that sense, the Manipuri uh, mm -hmm. sort of community is a single identity, which it is not. And you know, it's been four months since you went, three months since you were in Manipur, months, yeah. but uh, <coughs> Aisha has been there twice. Uh, twice. You were thrice. You yeah. were there before the conflict actually yes. started, and then you spent a long time there. You came back and you went back. Yeah. So, how, between the two of you, both of you, uh, how has the situation changed or altered in this very long period? Um, so there was a um, a big conflict. May 3, May 4, May, till May 7, that phase. Then it uh, reduced. But May and June, there were sparks, like, you know, of uh, big outrages, I would like to call them. But it's consistent in a way. In the periphery area, when you just step out of uh, South Imphal, you mm -hmm. know, the districts where it's clashing with uh, Bishnupur and Churchandpur or Kangpokpi, in those areas, in the smaller villages, uh, there's gunfiring every other day, even till now. In fact, today morning also. So That's on Thursday morning? Yes. No, I mean today morning. Yeah, the Thursday morning, yes. Right. So it continues. It's just that it doesn't make it to the mainstream headlines. So people are not aware of it, but it's definitely happening on ground. Siddhant, so from the reports that you see now, does it seem very markedly different from the situation you saw then the, between the two communities in particular? No, I mean, I, I think like we were reporting then and have since, uh, there's a stalemate. Uh, the, the borders have been created, the buffer zones are in place. And part of the reason why, like Aisha is pointing out, the violation, uh, the violence is under control is because these buffer zones are in place. Uh, the buffer zones are then policed, monitored, controlled by mostly central uh, forces, whether it's the army, the Assam Rifles, or BSF, CRPF, so many agencies are operating uh, there now. Uh, so because of that buffer zone, there is no to and fro movement at all of, of pretty much anyone, uh, except the press, hopefully. And, and, and there's supposed to be, for example, humanitarian aid that is allowed uh, through. That's not happening uh, either. Uh, you know, Imphal being the only airport in, in the state, that uh, it has a critical role in, in, in that uh, regard. Uh, so nothing has changed in terms of uh, the, the sort of political uh, objective of the cookie side, it remains a separate administration demand, uh, which has only intensified. Uh, I think also like we carried an interview with the head, uh, the head of the media cell of the ITLF, Kim Jai uh, saying that over the course of this violence, what was initially a demand voiced by the suspension of operation groups on the cookie side has now become a kind of societal demand. So civil society organizations, common people, everyone is kind of demanding this separate administration on the Koki side. Uh, on the Mete side, 
because like again like we have pointed out before that because of the geographical situation that the methes today find them in themselves in uh, limited to that central sort of circle in the imphal valley and with no access outside mm -hmm. uh it has shifted to a public call for maintaining what they are calling the territorial integrity of manipur right so those lines are now clearly draw drawn uh we can get into the nuances of territorial integrity and all but maybe we can keep that right, for, right. for a different discussion. you know i said territorial integrity immediately reminds me of one of your reports again published in news click which is actually about a border area where myanmar is close by and then you have manipur and you have the methes insisting that they will stay on over there we talking about more yeah. can you can you talk about this demand it seems very unusual a community which is under siege in that area wanting to stay on why right so i'll begin with explaining in churchanpur for example and kangpok it's a cookie dominated cookie zomi dominated area right, right. methes are minority there and uh, they had to move back to imphal when the riots broke in more uh, it's a cosmo crowd there are biharis punjabis tamilians methes cookies all living in a district comprising of cookies so tegnopol where more is it's a border town and a business hub so nobody wants to leave that Now on May three, when the violence broke out, Maithes fled to the other side. They fled into Myanmar, and uh, they were later recently brought back. Around four hundred forty-two Maithes have been brought back. They have uh, half of them have been placed in the Assam Rifles headquarters in Tegnopol mm -hmm. for the moment. The government has, of course, uh, put up uh, different uh, shelter homes, sort of setups or relief camps, and there is an option of taking them there. which would be in the valley but they are insisting on staying on in more reason being because it is a very um, uh, good opportunity place where they can do business across the border later on they don't want to and these will be the last of methes if they leave there will be no more methes in more but there's no possibility of actually uh, being living there and conducting a normal life having a business so then why do you want to be there when it's possibly uh, not safe it is uh, definitely not safe <clears throat> but that's where they want help from the government they want the government to set up something a sort of a um a buffer area for methes to live there okay. which will be well protected and they can continue and you know uh, go back to living a normal life but it seems like a it's, it seems like an impossible demand considering the situation and the tension there So then, what do you think? You've been to Moray. What What do you think is is it possible really to think of this as being anything but a political demand? To have uh, security. Yes, within a corner of the state where your community, uh, you know, is divided from the cookies from the hill areas, essentially, and then you want to sort of insist on staying on there. You can understand the livelihood concerns that people have and concerns about their future, mm. but. but it seems it seems as if there is some politics behind this demand or at least without politics you can't have uh, raised such a demand yeah yeah i mean and th this issue actually it became a bit of an issue a few weeks ago uh, when uh, the manipur government wanted to move some state police forces okay. state security forces into more town and into that area uh, where i think uh, <clears throat> the itlf and kotu and others Uh, responded uh, quite aggressively saying that you know this th is is not a possibility because uh, from their point of view these are the forces who have targeted them when the violence broke out and and ever since uh so they want only central forces there and it seems uh that that is another sort of interesting uh, divide right all of these for example the 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 rescues or the evacuate uh, repatriation that Aisha was talking about has also been done by the army and the assam yes. rifles Yes. So, uh, despite the fact that all of these people have been in some way helped or saved by either the army or the Assam Rifles, there is also political opposition to the presence of central forces uh, from the Mete side, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty loud and and clear. So, how how this will pan out? I mean, they will want a buffer then created where the security forces are their own people, mm -hmm. uh, not central government forces, probably. because that won't fit in with you know other uh, political narratives that are going on uh, but the economic uh, the uh, sort of the other political aspects of it are of course there is an ongoing insurgency uh, 
in uh, <coughs> in the state there are uh, outfits that are still banned and therefore holding continuing to hold uh, have a foothold in more in the border areas is vital uh, also i think many of the methes who live outside of the imphal valley do so because they have been unable to find economic opportunity uh, livelihood uh, sustenance in the valley itself for many reasons uh, even whether it's those who were living in churachandpur till the the violence began or those who are living in more it's it's uh, at least possible to find some kind of uh, livelihood so so that that is uh, front and center and if you have lived somewhere for or a lot of this is about land and and where you come from and roots and all of those things so if you have lived somewhere for a couple of generations you consider that your home uh, when for example these temporary houses have been constructed by the government that debate was happening should should they be built where they are today right. or where they have come from right, right. Now, to build where they have come from means you have to move people back uh we are nowhere close to a situation where people in large numbers can be moved back to where they lived uh, before may 3 is, is is there similar demand from the metes on the churachandpur side etc where people have moved uh, towards the valley or into relief camps uh some individual families do wish they could go back but they are aware that it won't be safe for them hence they are they are okay with making a sort of um compromise on that front but uh, this is where i was pointing out that in moria i found this to be very different that uh, maites who were earlier previously living in kangpokpi or chunchatpur or any other district are okay to adjust you know but obviously the ideal wish would be to go back to their own house but they also understand the current situation and they understand the divide they know that again uh, a lot of them face trauma also yeah. so for them to go back to that same area and you know live feeling threatened mm -hmm. and that goes for both communities right but for more it's a different sort of a demand they want it there. so so in a sense sidant whatever the government does uh, the accusation accusation of being partisan will follow it if if it tries to resettle people then in more and in churachandpur the difference in the attitude in both areas will stand out so and and the peace process has not begun begun yeah but yeah. there are a lot of there is a committee which has been set up there is there is a lot of reporting about discussions between the home ministry in delhi and various teams visiting from manipur uh, is that not going to be useful in the long run it's hard to say pragya at this point uh, what the discussions are exactly uh, what sort of promises are being made to which side and also i mean today i was looking at a statement from chief minister biren singh uh, talking about the need for uh, methe society to structure itself to get a bit organized uh, to identify bodies that represent its demands in a cohesive manner so that the government can understand who to negotiate with so four months into this issue the chief minister of manipur who is from manipur itself not from uh, somewhere else is trying to identify a body to discuss uh, mehte demands with uh, i mean uh, i mean the question arises who who does he want to answer this question right who who is supposed to answer this question the government is supposed to know uh or at least make that effort on its own right and uh, kokomi before that which is this coordinating sort of uh, committee that brings together a lot of organizations which on i think if i'm not wrong about the date but on the 8th of june uh in a large event in a televised press conference declared war on uh what it called kuki naku terrorists but essentially right. meaning the kuki community right uh that, that was underplayed a few days later and very quickly but today the home ministry is having discussions with that same organization right so peace plans peace talks uh i, I think on those fronts there seem very little movement uh, the only sort of small things we saw was <clears throat> in these buffer areas the peripheral areas of the imphal valley where literally uh, kuki and mehte are kind of across a like a small strip from each other uh their central government forces who are stationed are kind of setting up local peace committees 
where they're getting locals together to say, okay, let's say, uh, let's say you have a piece of land and I have a piece of land. You farm from five in the morning till noon, and then from noon to five p.m. it's my time, mm -hmm. so that we can, you know, at least go about our business uh, without uh, violence. Plant our paddy, do do whatever we need to. Uh, start to build a bit of confidence uh, that was existing earlier, because uh, as unrealistic as the separate administration demand is. Uh, it's not also going to magically go away and, and uh, become what it was on May 3rd, even if one community decides to say, we are sorry, which, which is also a point we have not reached. Right. Siddhant, again, with you, the, the point is also that bodies like the ITLF have been in discussion with the Home Ministry at the centre. And the basic question that, they're, that they were discussing just earlier this month was how to get bodies back from a morgue in Imphal. Yeah. Now, that seems like something very, very basic. Uh, you know, quickly, can you run us through where they are right now and why this issue should, why should the Home Ministry at the centre be in a position to have to, meet, you know, negotiate something so basic? Because only uh, sort of central government forces are in a position to actually make that happen physically. Uh, but they are only able to do it the minute uh, the general public is aware that there are cookie bodies mm -hmm. that are being moved from Imphal to, to the hills. There will be mass sort of agitation against that on the streets and on the roads where uh, they have to travel from. So the, the only possibility is to do it by air which would probably require uh, Air Force helicopters and, and uh, you know, uh, people to, uh, personnel to get that done. So that's why the, the central government has to be involved because uh, there's no conversation between the government in Imphal and these hill districts. So, so you were there in Imphal when actually this whole episode yes. of the, yes. uh, the burial was right. unfolding. What was that like? What was the scenario um, like that day? So there was um, protest from the Mehdi side because I was coming from the uh, city. So I was on this side of the border. But uh, the other side was holding a mass burial and they wanted the bodies to come through. Now, interestingly, the Home Ministry had already informed that the bodies will not be sent today on the same day, early morning, when notification had been issued. People were aware that the burial will not happen, but they had mobilized throughout the night to, for a protest, and they executed that, you know. So, uh, be it gun firing, be it uh, motor bombs throwing, all of that did take place, knowing that they would want to uh, do a mass burial on a land that they, Mehtis claimed to be theirs, and the cookies claimed to be theirs, you know for something that they thought that the other community is thinking of doing. Right. That itself triggered so much, right. while no bodies were transported. Right. So you can imagine the kind of, uh, you know, hatred that there is. And when you talk about peace, you know, I, want, I wanted to add, for that, the violence has to stop. For mm. that to happen, a dialogue needs to be initiated, you know. Uh, it cannot happen with ongoing violence, you know. Right. And one of the important things that's coming up now is constantly talk about political solution. And I, I guess the assembly of a state is a place where you're supposed to be able to discuss and uh, debate that. Uh, yeah. Siddhant, is there any likelihood of this situation actually improving? What's your impression from the trips you took there, as well as people whom you have been in touch with constantly? What do they say? Uh, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. And, you, you know, I mean, I think several people who have visited the state, not not uh, just reporters, but uh, opposition party members, uh, the people in the Mehte community as well, have publicly uh, voiced how little the Biren Singh government has been able to do to inspire confidence among its own people. Forget about anyone else. Uh, so in, in that sort of scenario, uh, to expect that this government has the ability to, uh, like Aisha was saying, it, it, it's not unbiased by any stretch. So, so to assume that the government A represents all of Manipur and therefore is able to take into account all of Manipur's interests is uh, 
just an idea that doesn't exist and and you cannot have a process of dialogue where the other side is unwilling to engage with or, or uh, nobody's willing to engage. And where arms are still uh, <clears throat> uh, spread among Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So every few days we have uh, news of one small cache of arms and ammunition that is recovered. Uh, but if you the sheer numbers uh, that are missing just from state armories uh, shows the extent to which the militarization is there. And, and the presence of uh, also uh, the 10 uh, Naga MLAs at the assembly session um, is also indicative of how much more complex this issue is going to get in the next few months. In fact, all the way till the lead up to the general elections in 2024, there are also some state elections coming up in the neighborhood. So, so it's likely to get much more complex. And I don't think there's any seriousness, unfortunately. It doesn't look like there's any real political will to find any or to even work towards any solution. Maybe the, the, the concentration is on uh, finding or ending the violence. But even there, I mean, I've spent quite a bit of time in Imphal. It's hard to find serious attempts to control mobs uh, to identify the leaders or the leadership of these uh, sort of mob-related movements and bring them to some kind of justice to show that anything is being done. We have now documented cases of horrific crimes having taken place and, and none of it has been sort of addressed in any uh, real manner. So uh, we're, I mean, we're at pretty much square zero. All right, Sadan, thanks very much. And thanks very much for joining us, uh, Aisha. Thank you. And that's all we have for you today. Thanks very much for watching this discussion. And we'll be bringing more reports and ground reports included from Manipur. Please keep watching News Click.